methodologies of Beaver ES and we were looking at uh, the look and feel, the description of the tool, the architecture of the tool, what are the different areas of the designer, then we were looking at the different responsible repositories and how to create a job server and especially the most important thing, how to set up a system when a newly installed newly installed BODS system is given to us. So yesterday we were looking at <coughs> sorry more of the administrative part like you know creating the users, creating the local repositories and more of interaction about business objects data services. So any questions on that before we continue with uh, today's session? So if you have any questions, please unmute yourself and you can ask a question or you can ping me on chat. I think we are good. Okay, so today uh, we will look at the technical stuff related to the BODS like how do we extract the data from the flat file, what are the data stores and what are the jobs and extracting the data from different scenarios. Okay, we will, based on the time that we have, we will look at the different scenarios like how do we extract the data from a flat file, from a SQL database, from an SAP system and we will see the scenarios like how do we extract the data from one SQL database and load it into another then how do we extract the data from a flat file and load it into a SQL. So today we will be concentrating more on the connectivities and extractions part. So we can ca call this class as uh, connectivities and establishing the connections and trying to extract the data. So we will look at more in detail. So what will happen when we establish a connection between the BODS system and the flat file? How does the metadata come into picture here? and when the actual data flows into the system, okay. So let me take you through a graphical representation about this. So for example, you have a flat file and a database table as your source, okay. So let us assume that this is the database table and the previous one is the flat file. So you have these two and you are trying to push the data from these two tables using BODS into a target table. Okay, so as, as we discussed yesterday, we need to establish a connection between the flat file, connection between the uh, table to the BODS system. So the table in the sense this table is present in a database, so we need a data store to establish a connection between the table and the BODS system. and in the second scenario, when it is a flat file, we directly establish a connection between, okay, yeah, Gopal, sure. So, uh, what I'm trying to say is different types of extraction. So, today we'll be looking at more into establishing a connection between the source systems and the target systems and how to extract the data between them. So today we'll be looking more at extractions and establishment of connections, okay. So when we have a flat file or when we have a database table, so these database tables reside within a database and we first need to establish a connection between the BODS system and the flat file and BODS system and the database table. So to establish a connection between the database table and the BODS system, we need a data store which we'll be looking at today. So data store allows us to establish a connection between the database and database and the BODS system. So let it be any database, let it be your source database, let it be your target database and let it be your intermediate staging database. BODS allows you to connect to this source target and the intermediate databases with the help of the data stores. Mm -hmm. So this is how we will be doing. So first we will be establishing the connection between different source tables to BODS and then we will establish a connection from BODS to the target system and later we extract the data from the different sources club them into a single data set, apply the business rules on top of them, validate the data 
and finally load that data into the target system. <clears throat> so this is what we'll be doing, the general scenario. So now we will look at establishing a connection and how we will be extracting the data. So uh, even before doing that, I want to explain like once we establish a connection between the source structure and the BODS system, the first thing that we can see is the metadata. So metadata means the data about the data that is the bookish definition, but if you look at the metadata of a table, it is all about the table structure, the number of columns that are present in the table, and the data types of each and every column. So once you establish a connection between a flat file or a database table to the BODS system, you can see the metadata. And based on that metadata, based on that table structure, you will be building your jobs. And once you complete building your jobs, and once you execute your job within the designer, then the data, actual data flows from the source tables through this structure and gets loaded into the target table. So this is how it happens. When you design the code, you design it on the metadata, and when you execute the code, the actual data comes into the picture. Okay, so this is how it goes. So we will see uh, extracting the data from a text file, CSV files, XLS files. So we also should know why we need to extract the data. So, so we need to know why we need to extract the data from a flat file. So what are the different scenarios that you allow that allows you, or uh, what are the real time scenarios that give you a data from a flat file? Because uh, we generally term like extracting the data from a flat file is one of the simplest form of a project, but it is neither the simplest pro part of the project or it is not a general scenario. It is one of the most important part of the project because in some client environments, the client might have some secure information or some information related to a lot of revenue or the pricing conditions. So for example, let us take uh, uh, a sales report of or a database tables of uh, uh, some perfume called Axe and if you want, if the data, if the owner wants to move the data from one database to another and if he gives you a complete access to the database, then probably we might be knowing that uh, this particular perfume bottle or a Dio bottle will cost us just one dollar or two, but they'll be, they might be selling it out for ten dollars. So. Not exactly, but I'm just giving an example. So we might be knowing the actual business of the client. So in that case, what the client wants to do is he wants to hide the actual data from our contact. So he will not give an access to the particular database. He will export the data and provide it to us in the form of a flat file. So that is the reason why we will be getting the flat files as the source tables in some of the scenarios. Uh, to refer to an example, the client that I worked in Dubai is uh, one of the biggest shopping malls in Dubai and he has the data coming across different segments like he has the data in the beauty category, he has the data in the gift category, then he has the beauty in the fashion category and he has the data in the form of allied category. So if you look at his data, a perfume can be a beauty product as can as well, it can be a gift product. Okay. So let us take an example of Swarovski, so the different diamond deliveries. So it can be a part of a gift and it can be a part of a fashion as well. So when you are extracting the data from the flat file, so you should be very careful that you are not duplicating the data because the, the streams the data they provide us with is quite good. So looking at the data, we can understand that, okay, this is the beauty data, this is the passion data, this is the gift data, and this is the allied data. But when we combine them, unknowingly, we might be creating some duplicates on the data. So we need to avoid such kind of situations when we are extracting the data from the flat file. And the second most important thing when we are extracting the data from the flat file is we might get a preceding and succeeding spaces on the data. But if you look on the table level or if you open an Excel sheet, you might not notice the preceding space. For example, 
1000 is never equal to a space 1000 when you want when you check that on the database level so it is completely different so because it, it compares the image of the source with the image of the target because the system cannot interpret this is a number this is a character so it can interpret but when the comparison happens the comparison happens on image to image so the system will never identify or if I have a customer name like Samuel in the source table and in the target table I have it as double space Samuel then definitely when I do a comparison it will consider it as a separate record it will not <coughs> match there so you need to remember one most important thing is when you are extracting the data from a flat file you need to do an L3 blank spaces and R3 blank spaces which is a built-in functionality of data services so there is no need for us to write any code for that DODS will take care with the help of the built-in functions so we need to do that as well so now let us see establishing connection to the flat files and DODS system so this is the first technical assignment that we'll be working on with the DODS system as a developer role so now I have some source flat files here okay I have some employee information then I have some uh, text files and some source files which, you, which I'll be using as the source here okay so now let us add this customers the .txt file into my DODS system and extract the data okay so as I told you first when I establish a connection I can see uh, only the metadata not the data so now this is a tab separated file so to extract the data from the BODS system or from a flat file to the BODS system first we need to log into the designer so yesterday we have seen how to create the local repositories and how to log into the designer okay so I think we are with user 1 on OK and click on reset the user so you, sometimes you get this window reset the user and continue so that is one of the most important thing that you need to know so when some other person also logged into your repository your local repository and with his credentials because the admin can have an access to everybody's repository if somebody is logged into your repository with his credentials or if last time when you close the designer yeah, your system did not identify or recognize that you close the designer and it is still in a login mode then you will get this pop-up message saying that click on reset or continue it says that some user is already logged into your repository you can click on reset user or you can click on continue so it will also give you a warning saying that if you click on continue you might lose the data that is unsaved so no need to worry you just click on reset user so it will save the tasks that are done by the other user who is logged into your system it will reset the user to your name okay so this is our designer screen which we have created yesterday and now today we will be looking at how to start using the technical part of the BODS alright so now we need to establish a connection between the flat file and the BODS system so it's a simple step approach, right? So let me open a new notepad. Okay, it's a simple step approach. The first one is go to local object library. I call it as lol, and go to formats where you have the file formats. Then go to the flat files. connect your source file here okay so it's a simple one step approach go to your local object library go to the formats go to the file formats connect your source file here so this is my local object library okay I have it here just let me highlight it it's on the left side bottom this is my local object library and here and here I have the format tab. this one so now click on the format tab and you have a different sort of flat files that you can 
add to the system. You can add a flat file, which is a .txt format or .csv is an XLS. Can be added here to the Excel workbook. XML data is also can also be added. BTD's data can also be added, and COBOL work copybooks can also be added. So now we are adding a .txt file. So there are different ways in which you can add it. First one is you click on this white area, right click, and go for a new, and go for a file format. It will take you to this file format window. Okay, or you can select the file format, right click, and go for a new, which will take you to the same window. Or you can go to the project, you can go to new, and you can go to a file format. <clears throat> okay, you can do it in three ways. Either under the formats tab of the local object library, you can click on that white area, right click, go for a new and choose the file format. Or you can go for the project, new, and go for the file format, the one is shown on the screen right now. And the third one is you can select the flat files, right click and go for a new. So it takes you to this uh, place where you can uh, it's a flat, flat file editor, file format editor, where you can just add your file here. So the first thing is you have to mention that it is a delimited or a fixed width or a uh, SAP transport. So it is a delimited file. Delimiters are like comma, space, tabs, or you know you have the pipe symbols as a delimiter, or you can have any special character as a delimiter. So we are saying that this is a delimited file. And the file format name should always start with FF underscore, FF stands for flat file, FF underscore source underscore. So as I told you yesterday, I insist a lot, of, lot on naming conventions because uh, from the way I see as a project lead or a project manager, the way I see at the jobs, this naming convention is as important as the development part. So uh, we need to keep in mind that naming convention is always should be given the first priority. So then the second one is adaptable schema. If your source structure is having improperly placed columns and like you, your source is supposed to be present in 10 columns but some of the rows are pasted in the 11th column as well due to some mismatch in the pasting or something like that then Generally, the BUD system will throw an error saying that this is not a proper format. So just in case, if you want to allow the data into the system to cross-check where exactly the bad data is present, then you can go for adaptable schema as yes, but as of now, we are not going. Then the second one, most important thing is data files. So if the data file is present locally on your system, you can select the local and if it is coming from an external system or uh, like something like a common shared drive, you have to select a job server. If it is local to your system, you have to select local. And if it is coming from an external system, you have to mention as a job server. Then the root directory, it will give you the path from where you are trying to extract the file. So click on the folder icon on the root directory and it will take me to the desktop. Right. So on the desktop, I have the data present in a file called source flat files. Okay, so this is my folder, source flat files. I have the data present in that. All right, and customer is the file that I want to add. So once I click on that, it gives me all the list of .txt files available. So I select the customer, that is what we are trying to add or connect and establish a connection to the BUDA system. So once you select customer, click on OK and it will give you a message saying that override the current schema with the form schema from the file you have selected. So this is the current schema, only one field is present and no definitions are given here. So now it will try to overwrite this with the file that you are selecting from the source. So click on S and now you can see some data present here and you, you see only two fields but if you look at the data there are so many fields. Okay, So next thing is you have to specify 
what sort of a delimiter it is. It is a tab separated delimiter. Now, if you see, well, the moment I make it as a tab separated delimiter, then you can see the data in the right format. But still, the table uh, field names are not proper, and the rows are like Windows New Line. When it is a text tab, you text file, you need to select a Windows New Line and skip the row headers as no and write the row headers as yes. Okay. So now, okay. So skip the row headers as no, make it yes. And now you can see this one, the table structure with the actual field names, their data types, and their lengths and their context types present here. Now your data is good and click on save. Now your source flag file is added here. Okay, And if you open this or if you edit this, you can see the table structure. So this is called the metadata. So the thing that we see here, that, that we see here on the screen, so this is called the metadata of the table. The number of columns present in a table, the data types and their lengths is called the metadata. So we, this terminology we'll be using a lot within the BODS designer when we are practicing this tool. So we need to understand that uh, this is the metadata. And once you add this metadata, your flat file is added. And now you have to remember one thing, what happens in the back end. So in the back end, your BODS system is connected to the flat file and the metadata about the flat file is read onto the BODS system. So now the BODS system saves only the metadata of the table, of the flat file. Now let us create a project and within that let us create a job to extract the data from the flat file. Okay now uh, let us take the first scenario that we'll be doing now is like once you add the flat file then create a database in SQL and load the data from the flat file into the database. Okay, so we are doing a sort of a small migration which is like loading the data from a flat file into a database table. Okay, so now we will see what are the different things that we need to do in order to carry out this task. First thing is create a target database in the SQL server or you can also identify an existing database into which you want to push the data or you can create a new database of your own. So the second step is create a data store to connect to the target database then third step is we already established a connection to the flat file, so I'm not mentioning that here. So generally that should be the third step. Okay, I'll I'll copy it and put it there. Establish a connection to your flat file. And fourth one is create a job and job to extract data from the flat file and load it into the database table. Okay, and fifth step is executing the job. All right, so these are the five simple steps that we'll be looking at. First one is creation of database, uh, target database in the SQL management studio. Then create a data store so that we can establish a connection to the target database, then attach the file format or assign the file format to your designer, then create a job to extract the data from the flat file and load it into the database table, and then once you execute the job, the data, actual data flows from your source flat file through the BODS system into the target database. So this could be the scenario. So once you extract, it, it extracts the data from the source database table. 
objects or source flat file, then it, 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 it saves the data within the BODS cache memory and it gets loaded into the target table. And once the job is completed, the data that is present in the BODS cache memory will be deleted. How the data type? So we have a question here, how the data type and data length will be identified. Okay, so when you are creating a flat file, okay, so every flat file will have some structure. Okay, so for example, if I look at this target customer, so this, when you open <coughs> or when you try to connect this to a video system or to a database and when you try to move the data from this table or from this flat file to any database, the default structure will be identified. So that is the reason why we are getting most of the columns as varchar when we establish a connection to the BODS system here. So now if you see, by default it is taking the variable character and it takes the maximum length of the fields here, okay. So a maximum length of each and every field is calculated here and it is copied here. So that, that is the default nature of the database. So even if you are trying to load the data from a flat file to a SQL system or from a flat file to SAP HANA system or to any other databases, so they, are, they automatically identify the metadata structure. Okay, is the answer clear, Venipapal? All right, thank you. So now, uh, the first thing, okay, this is the five step process that we are looking at now. The first one is creation of a target database. So for that we need to log into the SQL server. Uh, so the navigation for that is start all programs, SQL server 2008 R2 and management studio. So now let us assume that this is our target database, okay. So this is uh, within my system only, but let us assume that this is our target database. And once you log into this one, you get this connection string where you need to give the server name. It should be a SQL authentication. There are two sorts of authentications. Windows authentication allows you to connect to the system using the Windows password. And SQL authentication allows you with the username and password that you give here. So by default, it will be SA and SA123 or it always depends on the mood of your installation guy. When he changes that, he will change it to some other password which he likes, maybe in a company or outside. So it depends. So click on connect and once you get connected, you see the list of databases present here. So to create a new database, select the database here, right click and go for a new database and just give the name as target and you, you can save, you create your target database. I'm trying to utilize the already created because I already overdub my system with so many databases. So I have already created a database which is target and we will use BODS to connect to this one using the data stores and we will extract the data from the flat file and using BODS through the data store, we will try to push the data into this target database. Okay, so there is one more question. So therefore, connecting to the source flat file to the designer, the data gets aligned itself after following the delimiter register space, exactly. So when you define the structure of the file, so if, since it is a text file, we are giving a tab delimiter. And if it is a CSV file, you will be giving a comma, comma delimiter. Or if it is a fixed width the delimiter, we will specify what sort of a delimiter. If it is a pipe symbol delimiter, then in the file format editor, we will define uh, what type of uh, delimiters uh, that the data has. And then it will tell us, okay, then, it, then, then automatically the system identifies what sort of a structure you have from the database. I think Rishabh, that's that's the question, then that's the answer. And Gopal, yeah, we can change, uh, we can change the data types. Uh, for example, uh, there is a bug with the tool. So if you are having a column length, uh, column data type as double, so that will definitely throw an error. So if you click on this one, you can change that to any of this, okay? Uh, if the data type is double, sometimes it throws an error, okay? And so sometimes it will not and sometimes it will. So that is the bug with the tool. So 
whenever we get a data type double, we convert that into a where cat, or you can convert a date to date and time, or you can just convert it to time. You can create a timestamp. So these are the different data types, and also you can double click on this and you can change the length of that particular column. You can do that. Right. Yeah. Robot, is that clear? Perfect. So now we will see how we will go ahead with this job. So for that we need to create a job. So before that we just created a database or we just identified an existing database which is target. And now I want to create a connection to the this particular target database from my POS system. So to do that we need to create a data store. So data store allows us to establish the connection between the different source target and intermediate databases. Okay. So it is it is a kind of a gateway using which we can communicate with the data. Right. So what we need to do is like go to your local object library. Okay, this one local object library. Under that go to your data store stack and select the data stores and right click and go for a new it will take you to the new create new data store window okay so you just need to right click on this white area click on new it will take you to the create new data store window or you can click on this getting started window on the right hand side create new data store it will take you to the create new data store window or go to the projects go to new and go to the data store. So any of this will take you to uh, the creation of a new data store window. And the data store name starts with BS. Okay? So BS is your data store name, I mean the preceding text and target is your database name. So BS underscore target will become your actual data store name. And the second thing is the data store type. So there can be any type of your data store. It can be an SAP application, BW source, BW target, SQL web services, Oracle applications, and database or adapters. So now the database type is a database because uh, that is present in the SQL Server Management Studio. I'm selecting a database here. Then the database type is Microsoft SQL Server. You can have any of these as your source and targets. Okay. I think it covers most of the existing major databases. So I'm selecting Microsoft SQL Server. So the moment I select Microsoft SQL Server, it gives me all the different options which are related to Microsoft SQL Server. So if I select Infomix, it gives us related to Infomix. Or if I select some Teradata, it gives us the different options related to Teradata. So it is a dynamic window. You can then select the SQL Server. Then the version is 2008 Server that we have 2008 R2. Then the database name. The database name comes from here. So click on the Connect Object Explorer icon and you can get the server name. Copy the server name and give the same server name here. And we know the target database, it's target, then the username and password. Okay. So once you do this, once you give all these credentials, you just click on apply and see if what are the credentials that you have given or correct or not. If it is having yeah, uh Rishabh, I think yes, I told you yesterday we have the MySQL as well in the database type. No, no, you can select the database type as database and within the database version you can select it as MySQL. So on top of that you can create your own databases. Right? So you have to give all these credentials that are database name, target database name, the SQL, the login name and password for the SQL server and Click on apply to see if there are any errors. If there is any errors with the credentials, it will throw an error. And just click on OK. And your data store is created. So remember, data store is identified with this icon. 
Okay, just keep in mind data store is identified with this icon and this is the name of the data store that we have created. DS target is the name of the data store and this is the icon through which the data store is created. Now we are good at establishing a connection with the flat file to the BODS system and we have also completed uh, creating the database connection to the BODS system using a data store then what are the remaining steps that we need to do and create a job to extract the data from the flat file and load it into the database table. Okay, this is a very simple task. So first thing is uh, when we are discussing a initial class we discuss that project is a folder which will help us to you know hold all the related to jobs together. So first we have to create a project and we can create a job only under the project. So I am creating a project saying that PROJ underscore bot training. Okay, so I created a project. The moment I created a project, you can see a project here and we can also see the same project in the project area. So now so let us right click and go for a new bad job. So there are two types of jobs, bad jobs and real time jobs. Bad jobs are used to deal with the table and structure, the data in the form of the master data and real time jobs deal with the transactional data, the data which is in the form of a web service or a hyperlink. So now let us create a bad job because we know that we are trying to extract the data from a flat file. Okay, and the main new convention job underscore ff underscore sql underscore ext. So looking at this job, people should understand what we are trying to do. Okay, we are trying to extract the data from a flat file and load it into an SQL database table. Okay, the first one you did. We created the job. To create a job, we had to first create, I mean first time, initially when you are doing the first job, you need to create a project and later that on top of that project you can create any number of jobs. And the jobs that you create get saved here under the bad job list. So once you create this job, so I'm going to right click and go for a new bad job, use the name and once you create the job, the next thing that we need to do is create a workflow. Okay, and call this as workflow underscore ff underscore sql underscore extracting. This is not a mandatory thing because just to let you know how to create a workflow, I'm telling you about this one. We can directly create a data flow with under the job. So once you open this workflow, so now you see the hierarchy here, first project, then job, under the job we have the workflow. On the right corner, I mean on the right hand side, you have this tool palette available. Okay, this is a quick tool palette. So here you have the data flow. So click on the data flow and click back on the designer screen. The quick start or quick uh, st getting started screen is now turned into the canvas region where you can actually design the code. And now the data flow name, any guesses? DF underscore, FF underscore, SQL underscore, EXT. All right, so now we created a project, we created a job, and under the job we created a workflow, and under the workflow we created a data flow, right? So you can double click on this one, or you can just put your mouse pointer on the name, it will open it in a new, and then it will open it in a new window, and you can see in which level of the job that we are here, so we are in the workflow, and workflow has the data flow, we are on the job level, and job has a workflow, and this is the start page, so you can go through any of these tabs here. So open the data flow. Now go to the file formats. Select the file that you have just added to the BVDA system. Drag and drop it into the data flow. So now you see here we have the data flow. So you need to drag and drop it into the data flow. And you have to choose either it is your file source or the file target. So this file is my source. So I want to make it as my source. And similarly, you can just attach a file format and you can make it as a target as well and load some data into that. So this is a magnifying glass on which if I click, I can see the data that is coming from the database. And if you notice this one, 
BODS is smart enough to identify the special characters in the data as well. Okay, it can read the data with the special characters. It will not try to interpret that as boxes or some unknown special characters. So if you look at this data, the BODS system is smart enough to understand the accent characters. We can call it as accent characters. The BODS can understand that. It will not ignore that data. It can also understand Arabic because it always reads the data in the form of uh, an image. So we did a sort of an experiment on this one. We had some data in the form of a flat file, but the data is written in Arabic. And we extracted the data in Arabic and uh, we did a comparison. So it worked. So uh, luckily it worked because we copied the same data into a different column and we did a comparison on these two columns. And the theory system is smart enough to take the image of that Arabic line and it compared that with the other image and if it is correct then it, it understood that format. So BODS can read all these special characters because it tries to compare with it in terms of images. So if you click on the magnifying glass here, you can see the records that are present in the table and I mean data that is present in the table and to see the number of records you can see it at the bottom of the screen. So one out of 50 records are present. And if the data in the flat file is more than 1,000, so only 1,000 records are displayed. For that, we need to go to, if it is a database table, we will have a profile here. If you click on the profile, you get number of records button. So just click on the records button, and you can see the number of records there. But for a flat file, you will not be able to see that. Okay. So now this is the data that is present in our flat file. Now we need to extract the data from this flat file and load it into a database table. So now on the right hand side you have a, an icon called template table. Click on the template table and click it back on the canvas and give the name. Okay, target customer and the data store. It is automatically selecting the data store because there is only one data store that is uh, present that we have created and so that is the reason why it is showing only one data store. If you have more than one data stores created, it will give you the list of data stores that are present there and you have to choose onto which data store you have to create this. So click on OK. So directly connect, directly connect. So the moment you put your mouse pointer here, you get a chalk icon directly connect that with the target table. And if you want to delete that, select that and delete. So connect the chalk from there, and drag and drop it and connect to the target table and you have established a connection. And just validate the code. So you have a validate current and validate all options. Validate current will validate whatever there in the current page and validate all will validate the entire job. So now I get a message saying that there are no errors found. So if I execute this job, so it will ask me to change. So I click on S and this is the job execution screen where we have all these different options. And if you look at the job server, JS underscore user one is the server that we have created yesterday. So you click on OK and your job is completed successfully. Right? So now we will see. <clears throat> the time taken for the job. So job started on 22nd 1, 2013 at 7.44 a.m. 57 seconds and the job completed at 7.44.59 a.m. So it is like the job extraction of these 50 records completed in 2 seconds and if you look at the trace, the messages, so this is what we call it. We call it as the trace of the job, so different steps. So the job started and the current directory, it is searching for the bin directory on my system to <coughs> keep some database uh, files or some files, execution log files related to the BODS system. Then it is starting the job on this server with the port number 3505 and this is the job name and this is the run ID which is generated by the system and the job is initiated by the user called system and the process begins for the job and then 
the optimizing of the job happens. The UDS is smart enough to optimize the job and try to execute that in a pretty fast way. And we, we also have some other process where we can improve the performance. So we have one question coming up. Can we please go through the last extraction process of true? Sorry? Process of true validation. Can we please? Can we please go through? Uh, Rishabh, can you just type in your question? I'm not able to understand that. Or can we please go through the last extraction process of true validation? Hey, you want me to repeat that one? Yeah, once the job is done, I will just repeat that. Uh, if, if not, if you are asking some other patient, please type this again so that I can respond to you. Okay, so now, if, <coughs> if you look at this one, uh, this job is getting started and after the job, now you see a workflow, this is the hierarchy, so the workflow is started and the process to execute the workflow and data flow is started. And once the data flow is started, it searches what is the cache memory that is present in your system. So I, I get this bytes of cache memory available on my cache, or that is my RAM is good enough to have the data in it. And as I told you, when the extraction happens, the entire data is extracted into the system cache memory. What are the business rules that you apply within the BNA system happens within the system cache memory, and those records are pushed into the target table. Uh, last step in the sense, okay, I'll do that, I'll do that. Validation, I got it, I'll do that. Okay, so now if you look at this one, it searches for the available cache memory. It means it is comparing the source data structure or the, the volume of the source data with your cache memory and it try to analyze like what sort of data that you have and <clears throat> how many records are present in your cache room, I mean, in your source table, and will they be fit if in your cache memory or not? And then it uses the memory cache, and the data flow gets succeeded, it's completed successfully, and then the data flow ends. Then the workflow gets successfully completed, and the job gets successfully completed. So this is the order of execution: job, workflow, data flow. And the data flow gets completed, workflow gets completed, and the job gets completed. So this is your trace. And next one is your monitor. So if you look at the monitor, it says that from the source flat file, we have extracted 50 records, and it is pushed into the target table target underscore customer. And the total actual time took for the extraction of records and loading the records is 0 0.078 seconds. Okay, the absolute time for the entire job is uh, two seconds, but the actual time taken by this data movement, especially for the data movement, is less than a second. Okay, so this is your trace, and if you get any error, uh, you get to see a red mark here. So you can click on that icon, and it will show you what what is the error that is present. So for Visha, uh, validating the job means uh, there are two options: validate current and validate all. So validate current, it will validate whatever is there in this current window, okay? So if you have a workflow, so it will just validate that workflow. If you have a data flow, it will validate the data flow. Or if you have these connections, it will just validate this one. So validate current is whatever is present in the current page. But validate all does on the job level. So it validates the entire things related to the job, okay? So all the things, all the workflows, data flows, tables, everything is validated. So I think, Rishab, I answered your question. All right, perfect. So now that is the difference between validate and validate all. So now let us go to the database table to see if the records are moved or not. So now I see a magnifying glass here. Click on this, and I see the same data available in the database table. 50 records are present. As I told you, for the database table, you can see a profile tab here. Click on that, go to the records button, click on the record button, and it will show you the number of records that are present. Also, let us go to the backend database and verify if this target customer table is created or not. So go to the target database, 
expand then expand the tables and just search for the table target target MNOPQRST okay target customer or target customers okay TRGT customer is the table name that we have created so TRGT customer is available here it, it got created so right click it and go to the option select top thousand rows and it will give you uh, I mean it, it just writes a command automatically so it gives you a select start from this one so if I just remove all those things and I just keep start here okay, and I execute this one it gives me the data here and if I just give select count of star <coughs> on this table and press F5 so it gives me the number of rows that are present in the table are 50 records. Mm -hmm. So this is how we verify the exact data is moved from the flat file to the database table. So today we have seen a very fundamental thing, okay, how to extract the data from the flat file and load it into the database table using DVDS. Uh, we can use the transformations in between because since this is the first class, I did not use any transformations. I just connected it directly from the source to the target so in between you can use different transformations like query transformations validations formats so all the platform integrators and quality transformations you can use between the source and the target tables now if you go to the formats on um, local object library under the project you can see how the project that you have created under the jobs you can see the job under the workflows you can see the workflow under the data flows you can see the data flow and how many times it is used and under the data stores you can see the data store and under the flat file you can see so now you know when you add something to the BODS designer where exactly we can see that okay we have one more question coming up uh, yeah you can have more than one source and one target okay so parallelly you can extract the data from one source for example now Okay, we have one second. Uh, we have a few more minutes, so I want to add one more table. Okay, and we score cost one, two, three, four. This is one more table that I want to create, so I can directly connect it with this table. Okay, now validate this one. Let's give this job. Okay, the job is completed. And now, if you see, target customer and target one to three four got fifty records. And if you just go to the database at the back end and see, we'll be having a new table. Okay. Refresh the structure. Okay, target CUST one two three four should be the table name. Okay, now you see this target cost one two three four is created. You select top thousand rows, and you get the data here. So you can have more than one target table. So it depends, it always depends on the scenarios that you're working uh, because when you are extracting the data, you don't want to duplicate the data or you don't want to have a duplicate entry of the data present on the target database. So that is the reason it, it will by default be a one-to-one -one, uh, database from one table to the one target source to one, one target table. So how and when can we supply the primary keys in the target table? Yeah, that, that comes in the next part. So when we are having or when we are working with the query transformations, all right? So I did not use any transformations. That's what I was mentioning. So if I connect this one, 
connect this one. Open the cradle transmission. Select all the columns from the schema in, drag and drop them out. And now I want to make this customer ID as a primary key. I go and just check this box. Okay. Now I want company name also to be a primary key so that it will not allow any bad data. So I check on this. So if I save this job. Okay. If you go and see, I have these as the primary key columns on my target table. Okay. And the table that we are creating now is the template table. So for this definition template table, it gets dropped and recreated at the time of execution. We can also create a permanent table where the table will not get dropped and recreated. It will be a fixed permanent table. So that's it. Any questions on today? Uh, today's topic? So we'll see the remaining topics. Uh, Gopal, did I answer your question? All right, so any more questions on today's class? Niraj, Rishab, Vaishali, Ram, Gopal. All right, so if you have any questions, please email me on the ID that I'm going to send it to you all. Okay, so I'm going to ping my ID here, vivo.dataservices at gmail.com. All right. So this is my ID, vivo.dataservices at gmail.com. You can send me your queries. If you have any queries, you send it to me here. And I will try to respond to you at the earliest through the emails. Uh, like if you are having any question, so now you can ask me the question. But in future, when you start working with the tool, you might be having a question like how this thing works, or you might get stuck when you are working on something. So just take a screenshot if you might you might be getting an error which you are not trying to analyze that one. So take a screenshot of that one and send it to me through email. I'll try to rectify that. But I suggest you think twice because when you think twice, you will get the answer. That's how uh, we learned the tool, and that's how we got the solutions. So try to think it to yourself if you are not able to. <coughs> track that one you can send me an email and yeah so if you have any questions do send me an email so tomorrow we will be looking at the different scenarios of uh, the class so we'll look at uh, extracting the data from the flat file and creating the SQL database table which you have seen already now the first one is covered the second one is from a SQL to a flat file from SQL to SQL from flat file to flat file then we will see how do we connect to the SAP system and extract the data and what are conditions, scripts and global variables. So this will be most interesting for topic. So we'll look at that tomorrow. All right. So thanks for your time and have a good day ahead. We'll catch up tomorrow at the same time. All right. Thank you.